everyone. Welcome back to another week of Lone Star Hammered. I've got a very special guest as well as Nick Toomey, um, but we have uh, James Miller with us, who's uh, a very prestigious uh, Sisters player. So real quick, James, uh, let's just go over you and what, what you're doing in 40K, man. So a couple questions for you. How long have you been playing 40K? So I first started back in like late, mid, fifth edition um, with Guard, but that was like playing with friends and just at like local game stores or, you know, I was in high school at the time. So other like friends that were you know, just doing like basic stuff, right? Like 500 point lists essentially versus 500. And then I slowly started getting into it. I was more of a fantasy player than I was ever a uh, 40K. Oh, nice. And as, as you all know, fantasy died. Uh, <laughs> fantasy, fantasy didn't die. It just went through the end times and then it never came it's back. De- it's death <laughs> was greatly exaggerated. Yeah, yeah. death was greatly exaggerated. It's back now, which <laughs> is amazing. But um, I, I was more of a fantasy player and then that died. So I switched over to 40K full time because I was not going to play Sigmar. <laughs> Sweet. And uh, played guard then, and then uh, switched my way over to sisters eventually. Okay, and, cool. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what what armies do you actually own? So, what I own now versus what I've owned in my entirety is two different lists. So <laughs> <laughs> what what I own now is sisters, CSM, and I'm slowly phasing out my guard. Unfortunately, I just. The, the more I've played 40k throughout the years, the more I don't like single tone just... armies. Okay. So anything that's one note, I really don't. I like playing every phase of the game, right? So like guard, guard for example. Guard have playing. melee. They have, they have bayonets. <laughs> <laughs> they have horses with spears. Let me rephrase that. I like to play every phase of the game efficiently. There we okay. go. <laughs> that, that makes sense. That makes sense. So what, what's your what's your favorite army then right now? Is it, is it going to be Sisters or is it Chaos? It's a tie between Sisters and CSM, to be honest, because I really yeah. enjoyed Sisters when the Bloody Rose was super prevalent. Yeah. Um, that was just so much fun. I really enjoyed running around and tormenting people through Pentia. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> um, and right now, Chaos Space Marines with the Chosen and the Legionaries kind of fit that niche for me. Okay. And Sisters have transitioned more into a shooting army recently with uh, Melee being the sidebar until the Codex releases, and hopefully we get a Bloody Rose attachment, in which case I'll be all back in. Yeah. But <laughs> that's kind of worth it. to see. Yeah. 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 I, I, think, I think your guys' Codex will be fun. Well, cool, man. That's awesome. Um, and as always on Lone Star Hammered, we are drinking. Uh, so I have myself. I'm drinking a good old bottle of Weller 12-year. Um, it's pretty, pretty fucking tasty. Nick, what do you got tonight? <laughs> Nice. I've got a Diablo Black Cabernet. It's okay. Delicious. And uh, James, I know you had something earlier. Would you? Would you have? Well, I already finished my bottle of wine. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, Hell yeah. That's the way to do it, man. Cool. Well, hey, man. Wel- welcome and welcome back, Nick. Um, just some housekeeping stuff to do really quick. Uh, gonna talk about some of those events coming up. And that big one is gonna be uh, War Dome Houston. Once again, there's gonna be. A promo code if you buy your ticket for Wardome Houston, please use the promo code HAMMERED so that I get to choose whatever high school that they actually donate a bunch of 40k stuff to, including the terrains that uh, um, is going to be coming from Clutch and from Alamo as well. Those events are also going to bump in on that charity. Apparently Nick wants me to say something about the Black Crusade, but we'll talk about that at the end because it's a... Uh, uh, what is it? It's, not, it's a TTS thing, right? It's a tabletop simulator and then there's also the iron cage um which is sold out james <laughs> but hey i'm gonna give a shout out to that event it's a fantastic event that's ran here and james is doing another iron cage uh in september but main thing first buy your tickets for Wardome houston and then look for all these other events coming up after that um, people don't people don't know about the fall fake out yet yeah there's i'm sorry what is that the Iron Cage Fall Fake Out. That'll be the September event. Okay, cool. When when do tickets nice. go on sale for that? Because I know you sell out super quick. Yeah, we sold out the Bedford Beatdown in a three week period. So oh. um, Fall Fake Out will probably be going live a week about a month or so after Bedford's over, which is April sixth and seventh. Okay, cool. So sometime in uh, April or May, I'll probably yeah. have all of that worked out. Okay, just let me know because I got to get my ticket for that since I'm missing the. Uh... This iron cage for the which one is this? This is the uh, 
Bedford Beatdown. Bedford Beatdown. Yeah. Dude, I love Iron Cage. It's always a fun event. Um, all right. Well, hey, let's get into some of these lists for this week as well. And since I have two uh, fantastic sisters players with us, we are going to do a very strong faction focus on sisters once we rip through all of just the only first place winners. We're not going to go through all the undefeated, unfortunately, this list or this this week. We're just going to go through those first place winners and their lists and the events that they went to. So let's start. We're going to start with Games Unplugged. It's a 40k tournament that happened in Midlothian, Texas, and our First place winner is going to be Jonathan Seelis playing orcs, which I fucking love to see. I love seeing orcs on the table, man. Um, let's see. Depends what... if I'm playing them or not. Yeah, sisters don't do well into orcs. Sometimes they can. They, it's it's just they. That's an army that can trade sometimes pretty well with you. Depends I, I do miss the days of just slaughtering like 120 orcs with Ravincia. Yeah, that was it, always fun. <laughs> I really didn't like the uh, what? What are the giant transport things that used to be psychers and have like all the keywords? Well, they, the they're still rigs? they're still psychers. Yeah, they're kill rigs. <laughs> they still yeah, have they, they still have absolutely yeah. phenomenal shooting and attacks. I love I yeah. love kill rigs. The, those kill rigs would always kill me back in like ninth edition. I haven't played too many of them in tenth, but kill rigs used to be just absolutely wrecking everything. I don't know if they're still pretty decent or not oh they're still pretty good they're all right okay yeah yeah well let's let's rock into this guy's list so we have uh, a death killer war trike with the super cyborg body that's that four feel no pain we have gas we see him a lot unless he just he offers so much help to that army and he's just one of those big units it's really hard to take off the table we have captain bad Ruck, and if he's there i'm going to assume that there's going to be some flash gets as well because bad Ruck makes them insanely better we have Mazrog uh, Scragbad, which is going to be that big, really hard to kill, uh, pretty much monster sore. Uh, what is it? It's a squigasaur sort of thing. That thing's that thing's a cool uh, model. Yeah, Just mad bad riding, riding a shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a war boss with the head wampas kill choppa, and let me look at that one real quick. That is just going to give him extra attacks and devastating wounds. So that's pretty good. And last one is going to be a weird boy just hanging out by himself. So we've got a small boy squad, only 10 man. That's surprising to see, actually. Um, one, two, three trucks. That big flash gets bomb, more than likely in one of those trucks with bad ruck, just getting out and laying hate all over the field. Squad of Gretchen. Uh, two squads. Those are super fucking good for taking fixed secondaries and just making sure that nobody goes in your backfield because it's just such a big unit that you can really zone out a lot of your backfield with. We have a squad of Grot Tanks. I love Grot Tanks. Grot Tanks, dude. dude they are, this list is insane. Yeah, I Those love I love Grot Tanks, man. I think they actually shoot phenomenally well. And they're like one of those things that like you don't see that much. And then when you do, you're like, holy shit, they have a what launcher? Like they 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 are really very good. Uh they are one of those they are one of those sleeper units and orcs that not a lot of people look at and they go, hey, you know, it's okay, but when you see it on the tabletop, it actually really outperforms what its uh, on paper stats really are. Hundred percent, dude. I, I I agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, they they always perform well. well. It's a little expensive at one fifty five for orcs. Like usually with orcs, they're like, holy shit, it's over hundred points. I'm never gonna run that. Uh, <laughs> but for them, I, I think the one fifty five they're they're pretty sweet. Uh, we have a unit of uh, two man mega knobs. Um, that's they're obviously gonna be hanging out with Gazgold. A unit of knobs. Uh, definitely hanging out with that um, friggin' war boss and going in one of those trucks to just fill those up. And then, sorry, I lost my track. Uh, one, two, Squig Hog Boys. I love the Squig Hog Boys. The damage, too, from them can be really, really aggressive, especially when they turn on the wah. Um, and as I've heard that the wah gets better if you scream out, wah. Um, I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> just, that's up for... That's up for debate. And then two you units of... You got to your vocal cords. Yeah. The, the, squig, the squig hog boys are really good in the current meta because a lot of people are spamming vehicles. And if I'm yeah. if I'm not mistaken, they get a lot of bonuses to vehicles and monster slaying. Monsters and remember. vehicles, they get they get their... That's what their bonus is. That's what they want to go kill. Um, and they're really good at doing yeah. that. So and they, they are really good in the current meta, especially with their wound count and all that. Oh, yeah. And then uh, even even the, uh, the bomb squig, too. It's an out-of-phase kind of attack that 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 can be very devastating to a lot of units because it can just delete certain things um and then two storm boys squads obviously either to just clog up the midfield for your opponent or to score some secondary objectives so this is this is an interesting list this is not 
kind of that typical orc list that we've been seeing. It's a little bit of everything. It's kind of like a, a collection of the things that have been working all together, and obviously it worked for him. How many how many trucks did he have again? He had three, three trucks. trucks. Yeah. Yeah. So his first opponent was Stephen <clears throat> Oliver um, playing Knights. And like we just talked about, I, I bet you the Squig Hawks did, did money. Them and Gazgold. Gazgold is actually yeah. a menace for Knights. Them, um, Gazgold, and the Flash Gates are just going to completely wreck Knights. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep, yep, yep. The next one was actually, he played uh, Awakened Dynasty Necrons. This is actually like, I like Awakened there Dynasty. A, there was a Titan in that Knights list, too. Just just want to... Oh, was there? Jesus Christ, did I miss that? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't look through that <laughs> yeah. whole list. Is he played a Titan? Warhound in there. That's he had a amazing. Warhound? Thank God. Yeah, right. Warhound, Canis, a couple Orglaze, and then two Assassins. That's the list. That's awesome. Uh, that's, that, that's not a list. That's a meme. <laughs> uh, it's fun to see him on the table. I love seeing the Warhound. Um, what is it? Uh, Aaron Kelman went four and two at LVO with a Warhound on the table. Yeah. So it's, right. it's not, it's not like right. it's not uh, viable. It's just, it's not a GT winning list, if that makes no. sense. Yeah. No. And what he did is he just, he lost his first two games and then went and like stat checked everybody else on, on lower tables, which is, that's what his plan was. And it worked out really well. It was awesome. Which, which is what you're doing with the Warhound. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Exactly. Yeah. The whole point. Um, but then, yeah, Nathaniel Roach was playing Awakened Dynasty Necrons. A um, couple of Satans in there. How many pretty, Satans? Pretty, pretty good list. A couple, you know, I counted at least two before I, I turned away. Uh, Very looks strange like two. list, honestly. Yeah, it's it's Awaken though. I think Awaken Dynasty is just one of those things, uh, and you don't see Lich Guard too much on the table anymore. But Awaken Dynasty what? can just have some interesting plays. I'm not too familiar with the Awaken Dynasty. What does that entail? That, that was like their index one. Yep. Um, and normally you see Zerus in like every. Awaken this uh, dynasty list, but this this guy did not take Zerus, but he's got thirty immortals, twenty warriors, two doomsday arcs, and ten lich guard, which is just a little it's a different. Lot. It's a lot of bodies. That, that list seems like it'd be better served if it was going hyper crypt or something a little bit more traditional. To be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah with that many immortals, I'd probably agree with you there. But... Yeah, and he could have just been playing that up just because he was at an RTT, and then the last person he played yeah. was actually Custodes, and I think Custodes can be a very hard matchup for orcs because they can just turn yeah. on their minus one damage but this custodian not, not only that has no the orcs, they have no wardens orcs historically really do suffer against uh two of armor saves oh, yeah. especially with how especially with how prevalent cover is now that two of armor save turns up into with uh, any minus one ap which is what orcs predominantly spam is still a two of armor save at the end of the day 90 percent of the time yep so that, that's an impressive win from the orc player yeah no that's a very good win and it was his yep. lowest win too. So good, good job to Jonathan, man, and strong work for uh, winning games unplugged. All right, our next one is going to be Asgard Games. They're March forty k RTT, and these guys were over in Houston, Texas. This was a looks like fifteen man event, so it's a decent sized one for the weekend. And our first place winner is going to be Steven Salazar from Team Sanctum. Let's check out his list. I've played Steven before. He's actually a very good player. Um, all right, so we have. I love. I love when people mess with their names. So he has uh, Tau teams. Whoops, I forgot my Crisis suits. Um, still not using any of the new stuff because honestly, it hasn't had a general re release. I actually just texted somebody about why I don't have the Codex, and it's because it's not out. Um, we have Unva. Uh, we have a Cadre Fireblade with Exemplar of the Kalyan, just making them better at what they do. Commander Shadow Sun, uh, Long Strike. Um, I, I love seeing Longstrike recently. Like having having him with that railgun is is phenomenal. It does so it, much. It's mm -hmm. a bit of a shame that the rumor is on the street that he's not in the codex coming out. He's, mm -hmm. he's, not, one, no. he's one of the, the as uh, yeah. It, oh, I, I, I think that rumor is relatively uh, true. Well, we've got the points sheet, and he he ain't on it. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time a point sheet's faked, so I, I always kind of hold out some kind of a shadow of a doubt. But yep. it, it's pretty, at this point, substantiated that he's cut from the game, unfortunately, which means that four railgun, um, four railgun tanks is no longer an option, which yeah. on one hand is a great thing uh, to run a tank <laughs> list. On the other hand, it's a little sad to see some of these legacy characters get cut constantly. Yeah, they do. I don't get why they're doing that, well, too. The thing with Anva is like at least Anva's like actually dead in the lore. Like he dead and gone. Yeah. 
but long strike, I don't know. Well, they they keep having they keep going back and forth on if they want that two hundred time, two hundred year jump essentially because the mm-hmm. Indominus Crusade essentially lasts like one hundred fifty years or something like that. Yep. And um, if that's where we're at now, you know, the lion coming back and all that, I don't think Tau have too much of a longer lifespan than humans, so it makes sense that someone like Long Strike or you know Imperial Guard, for example, lost Pask. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense that these characters, and yeah, and Yark even. Uh, yep. That's the, the uh, famously the more. Uh, I mean, Yark, Yark's there. been dead forever, though. But yeah, yeah, he's been dead since tenth. But a lot of these legacy characters are kind of coming back, and it'd be in- it's interesting to see if they are going to kind of step up and increase the lore aspect and add more legacy characters, or if they're going to continue on the route that they have been with Black Library of they add, for example, the the guard sergeant. Uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to end up doing that, honestly. And I also right. think that like they're just going to just make more Space Marine lieutenants. The the issue <laughs> too. The, the issue with the uh, um, Minsk, I think her name is, um, mm-hmm. is they they or they did this recently with an orc character. We were just talking about orcs. Uh, they they released the the model, and then three they gave them rules, and then two seconds later they legends the rules. Yep. So oh, yeah. it's just. It's a little disappointing that they aren't going to just stick with characters and just kind of give them cool there was, rules. But... There was a new orc model too, right? He was like a... That's, that's, yeah, the, one he's, that's the, the one he's talking about, that they released yeah. the rules for it. It was from one of the books. Super cool looking model, and then they legended it immediately. Yeah. 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 It happens. But hey, so the rest of the stuff that we have, Long Strike, Sad Day, probably one of the last RTTs that we may see him in, because that book is right around the corner from coming out for general general release. Uh, but we have two breach or sorry, three breachers. Um, and these are just going to be 10 man breachers. Oh, sorry. Four, four breacher squads. I love seeing the breachers. They're so fucking good. They're good. And they, they just get better the closer they get to you, which is always awesome. Uh, one devil fish, uh, one ghost kill. I love seeing the ghost kills too. Some people have taken them out of their list. I think the ghost kill can still be a very strong, uh, forward deployed unit. That's, that's kind of hard to take off objectives. If we could talk about the breachers real quick. I really like those for Tau because... Tau is traditionally a very standoffish uh, army. Yep. So breachers really do provide one of those units where you can get up close and personal and really take those objectives and clear off your opponent um, by jumping out of a devil fish or anything like that and dedicated transport. Yep. And um, to your point, the ghost kill is another one of those units that on paper, it doesn't look that great, but the fact that it has loan op and stealth on a giant big old suit yeah. is not something that you can really take into account. Like, I know it's not too dissimilar from a Riptide in terms of points, but the fact that it's not going to get shot for about 90% of the game, and it's going to sit there and it can be whatever you need it to be. Yeah, at that, yeah, at that one serious resources to go into it. Yep, at that exactly. one, at that 160, you're paying for that loan up on just a very hard to kill unit, which is, which is, it makes yeah. sense. Very hard to kill a unit, and it has a decent output as well. Yep. No, yeah. it's not bad at all. And, like, dude, I agree with you on the breachers. I'm surprised to only see one double fish. I, I like at least, like, yeah, two double fish with the part. breachers. I, he's Either he's foot slogging them or he's reserving them, which is also not the worst idea in the world. Playing that razor's edge, I like it. Yep. Um, and then two My hammerheads. <laughs> two hammerhead gunships. Um, two crew hound units. Honestly, I like those as well, just for being fast moving and, and you're dealing with everything else's army. You may forget about them uh, and they can score secondaries or get him points where it needs to be. One pathfinder was, team. The crew hounds are very similar to the way that nurglings kind of operate, which yep. is they're not, they have, they're like OC zero. I'm pretty sure. Um, unless they're within range of a crew character, but, uh, or that might be the new codex talking. <laughs> um, okay. But they, they really do operate great for those uh, was action objectives, essentially, that you'll get yeah. when you get tactical cards. So and they, really they, they have a 9-inch scout, too, so they can also be used to kind of possibly move block your opponents yeah. and just force them into the lines of shooting that you need with Tau, which is can be very, yeah. very good. But they are OC0, exactly. you are correct on that. Super quick, super cheap, and they come with stealth, too, so they're just you don't want to shoot them. Yep. Stealth, stealth is one of those buffs that a lot of people kind of overlook, but the... One of the core principles of 10th is they have very few plus one to hits, um, like what was in 9th, where everything had plus one to hit, it seemed yeah. like, at almost all times, or that in the back pocket for if you really needed it. 10th edition has really rolled a lot of that back to where a minus one to hit really does have the effect that you would not be expecting half the time. I agree with so, that very much so. Unless you're playing Votan and then, haha. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, go back to your four ups. I love Votant. Um, but yeah, so after that, he's got a Pathfinder team. Um, I like seeing Pathfinders. They're, they're kind of one of those auto take units, I think. Uh, and then two Riptides. We're seeing a lot of Riptides recently. Uh, they're 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 that new powerhouse for this Tau arsenal, uh, especially when that Codex comes out. I think Riptides are going to be very strong, uh, supporting some battle suits as well. Two Tetras to give them the rerolls that they actually need, or sorry, three Tetras uh, to marker and give rerolls where it's needed, and then one squad of Vespids as well. Honestly, I really like this list. It looks like it can score very well on secondaries as well as just put out a metric fuck ton of shooting. Uh, what are your, what are your guys' thoughts? This list, unlike most Tau lists, is a list that both shoots like a Tau list, but also plays the game in the way that you need to intend. Yeah. Tenth edition is very much about movement, and what a lot of Tau players or gunline players in general don't understand is that they need to be able to move and really take yep. advantage of that movement phase in order to play the game, get objectives, or do whatever you may need to do. Right? Yeah, this edition and really they, isn't that... Uh sit back in your backfield edition and just wait for your opponent to come to you. It's very yeah, rare that you see games like that. This this list does have like a slow spool up, but it's scoring the entire time. Yep. You know, so and that's, you've that's, got that's, the... That's all Tau right now at the Kalyanas. They do want to like gradually <laughs> build up to that to that third turn. Yeah, exactly. And, what? you know, the, the list is kind of built to go at that speed, right? You don't have all the devil fishes like zooming forward immediately. Um, you're just kind of like sending forward the hounds and maybe one breacher team, yeah. or even have that devil fish behind cover and just recycle, sending out you know breacher teams. Yep, uh, to go do whatever. Once they get that Cayune detachment, we're all done. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> um, all right, so his first opponent was Andy Anderson. Uh, he's playing IG. Honestly, I think I think that uh, Steven's list is a, is a shoe in for this one. Uh, it's got a lot of ways to deal with anything that IG can really throw their, their way. It really depends on what the IG list is. Due to that long spool up time, as uh, Nick was talking about, if the guard player is spamming artillery like Manticores and Basilisks, you can kind of put yourself in a situation to where the Tau player is on the back foot beginning, assuming that the guard player also has decent target priority with those pieces. Nah, he's, he's out, playing. He's playing way more aggressive. He's got some. Yeah, he's dorms. got one basilisk basically. Uh, he's, he's got the big, the bit, the big death course, uh, death course squad, and it's pretty standard. After yeah, that. this this army is meant to go. His, his army is meant to stand in your face and survive the shooting, and it's just not going to against that Tau list. Against Tau, no, you don't yeah. survive the shooting. <laughs> and the breachers will absolutely shred that death course squad. Yeah, like, no problem. Not, so, yeah, yeah. You, you honestly commit two breacher squads, and you've basically dealt with that. Yeah, sad day. Sorry, guard. Bring guard. Guard, sorry. <laughs> Poor guard. His next one was Grey Knights uh, with just a bunch of big mortal wound dealers and damage dealers. He's running like seven total fucking units, it looks like. A bunch of Dread Knights, a bunch of Terminators. Yeah, two good Termi squads, yeah. three Librarians. Um, and honestly, yeah, those railguns mean... probably shredded through that shit. Those railguns. Oh, yeah. Eight through that. Wow. And, and he's got such cheap screens. Like, you know, you, don't, you never want to put your librarian into a you know crew hound. squad of crew hounds or <laughs> yeah. something right like, yeah no and I'm, I'm sure that's yeah. what he used that mobility that he has to be like oh cool you want to come in sweet enjoy yeah. enjoy crew hounds while gray knights did get a, a decent substantial buff i do think that they their players need to understand that their army is a toolbox not necessarily yeah. a one size fits all so if you come against a crew li or a towel list i should say um as such as we see here you kind of have to understand that you can't just reserve, do the default reserve 90% of your army like Grey Knights want to do. Yep. But that also does put them in a really tough spot because now they're putting themselves in the line of fire for all those Riptides the entire game. So that's going to be an uphill battle for the Grey Knights player just off the bat, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah, then... and Grey Knights kind of rely on uh, on good terrain too, which yeah. may be hit or miss at RTTs. You never know. Good terrain, but also your opponent also being about an equal or on par elite army. Uh, yeah. the, the nice part about this Tau list is he does have a lot of chaff to where yeah. he can just toss it anywhere. Like, I don't yeah. want the only place that I want you to be is you're going to deep strike in your deployment zone or here and here. Yeah, you're yeah, not going to go is. anywhere else. I, I know where you're going to end up because of that. I know I can shoot you when you come down. Yeah, he has 40 yeah. bodies that are just there to either screen or come in and, and make your opponent regret even coming near 
where you didn't mm -hmm. want them to pretty much like and the, and the low as much as it sucks the low ap on gray knights is going to really struggle oh, with yeah. the rift tides and other items that have a two up save because cover again is so prevalent in this edition a minus one or even a minus two ap against a two up armor save yep. he's going to do nothing unfortunately yeah very except for true. those, except for those breachers, those at strength six, and I think they can get them up to AP three. Like they will just fucking shred those. Yeah, but, but that's the thing is they, they get up to AP three, and then they're shredded, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. The breachers are just they're they're very very points effective. But yeah, and then his last opponent was gonna be Death Guard, which is a bunch of big shit. Um, it's either big blobs of Terminators or big vehicles, and and once again, those railguns probably paid their points back with that and the same thing with those riptides and it's awesome to see him like play into those lists and do really well just into something that he designed his list to do well against which is which is great that's what that list building section is for when you're setting yeah it looks army. like he knows his meta for sure yeah, yeah. No, this player i don't even i don't even know if he set that up just for his meta though like that's just a honestly well, it's, it's a well-rounded it's, it's well tal list i like it a lot yeah. This Mike. this player definitely understood that in his meta, people build taller, not wider. So <laughs> he just he decided to go wider with it and punish the people that were going taller. If you're bringing ten man Terminator bricks, the obvious answer is to bring Crew Hounds that are worth nothing, right? And they just all they do is screen you out the entire game and keep pushing you out, pushing you out. Hundred so percent. Because between two units, that's an eighteen inch deep strike bubble, um, oh, yeah. and you can pretty much get the entire entire board pretty quickly, yep. especially with a nine inch scout. So. This player did an amazing job of tailoring his list to the meta that he knew he was going to be facing. 100%. Good job, man. Good job, Stephen, for winning that one. All right, our next one is going to be War Games Con presents King of the Castle, March 2024. That was going to be over in Austin, Texas, ran by our good old John Cook. He's the, the guy that does a lot for us here in Texas, so good job, John, for running a good event again. And it looks like they had... Uh, 40K Santa Claus over here. Yeah, it looks like they had 19 <laughs> players. Yeah, and nice. their winner of their event was going to be Kyle Kingsbury. Oh, Kingsbury. Rick David Hall, score more points. Yeah. Oh, David. Yeah, look <laughs> at that. I'm excited. I, I might try old, it and make the... second uh, place David over here. I might try and make the uh, the mini GT. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Yeah. <laughs> Just to see if I can knock out David at the mini GT. All right. Uh, so for Kyle, uh, his list was just the test army, running space wolves with that Stormlands task force. Pretty good task force. I like that one a lot. We've got a biologist or biologus. I always pronounce that wrong. A biologus, uh, Canis Wolfborn, a lieutenant, uh, Log Logan Grimnar, Ragnar, a wolf guard battle leader on a thunder wolf. So just. A big old wolf guard guy on a thunder wolf, another wolf lord on a thunder wolf, one unit of blood claws, a rhino, assault intercessors with jump packs. I love seeing those units on the board. An eradicator squad. This is a big one. This is a six man eradicator squad. One incursor squad that's going to be there just to zone out your backfield. Uh, infiltrator squad, kind of get to get up a little bit closer to your opponent. A stern guard veteran squad. Um, and I think that's going to be with that. Biologus, honestly, I think that's who he's going to put that with, maybe. Or maybe with the Meltas, just to give them uh, those lethal hits. Um, and then a Storm Could be Wolf. with the Eradicators? Huh? Or, Can yeah, he yeah. go with the Eradicators? I, I don't know. Look that up for me while I keep reading this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you looking it up, damn it, Nick? I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. It's the they can go with the Eradicators. Okay. Um, and then we've got a Storm Wolf. Um, you, I've not seen a storm wolf in a very long time. I haven't seen one of those in a and long time. And it is time, such dude. a cool fucking model. It is like, I remember when that model came out, like it was like right after, uh, um, like storm ravens or is it storm ravens? No, it's, uh, God, I can't, I can't think right now. Storm. Yeah, it is a storm yeah. raven. It was like right after storm ravens came out and they're like, all right, Wait. we're going to drop something for, uh, for wolves. And I was like, sweet. It's going to be like. Something cool, like maybe a really cool wolf or some shit. And it was like, it's a storm raven with smaller wings. And I was like, holy fuck, this is. <laughs> and it's got a big-ass gun in the middle of it. This is fucking sick. Uh, and he's running that one with the big-ass gun. 
Very 40k. Yeah, it's, I don't uh, even... basically a space Higgins boat, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even. Like I don't range. even. Honestly, I don't even know what. And uh, I'm gonna look it up because I am. I'm super curious. I have no idea what the Hellfrost cannon. The the cannon does. I've never. I've never seen somebody play this when the new edition came out. So it's we like, it is it's a, like one shot five damage or something like that. Uh. So yeah. Well, hold, it's twin link, bro. That could be. That could be fucking destructive. Uh. So it has two profiles. It's dispersed, so it gets a uh, 12 inch torrent. Strength or D6 shots, strength six minus one, two damage, twin linked. Eh, not the worst. I wish it ignored cover. Um, and then that one shot, twin linked, strength nine minus three, five damage. That is the weirdest fucking profile ever. And didn't that gun used to like freeze you to death? Like it was like if you rolled a fucking six, the unit just dies or some shit. Like what happened to that? That is weird. What was the, uh, yeah. what was the damage on the dispersed again? Two. 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 What was the AP? One. But here's the thing, though. You AP. can pick. You can put those six eradicators and the biologists in there. Can you? Is it? Is it? Is so? Yeah, this is the transport one. Yep. They just. Oh, take okay. Up this two isn't. Slots. I thought this was the one with the gun inside of it. You don't talk about. Honestly, there's, there's another honestly, one with a true. gun inside. A AP one uh, on a flyer actually isn't all that bad because you can make sure that you're in position to where your opponent doesn't get cover. You're clever with your movement. So yeah. that's not actually all that awful. Yeah. That, that Unless can... they spend one CP per code grand, of course, but at that yeah. point they're spending CP. So yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, and after the storm, yeah, so, wolf... oh, sorry. Yeah. Now I was just going to say, so what he can do with this thing is zoom this storm will pop, get the eradicators out, blow something up, like literally just put them right in the middle of his army. And then as soon as one unit moves, he uses that Storm Lance, uh, Wind Swift Evasion, one yep. CP, hops back into the Storm Wolf, potentially. Yeah. But, yeah. It's definitely a move I, they can do. And then he's got two big Thunderwolf Cavalry squads. Like, if he did just launch that Storm Wolf up the board and make that a very hard unit to deal with, um, and then bring in the Thunderwolf Cavalry on the sides, you, you, can, you can crush your opponent if they even go try to deal with what you've presented to them. The detachment gives uh, advanced and charge, correct? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you can and you can disembark advance and charge from this. Can you really from this? Uh, oh yeah. Hmm. Transport. Yeah. That's a weird. Before that's a weird moves, fucking transport. Yeah. I dude, like I said, I've just never seen it before. It's one of those. It's one of those yeah. weird things, I, and I love seeing cool it list. because it looks. It's such a cool. It, it is a cool list, and it's such a cool model. I I would love to see the thing on the table. It's probably um, got wonky rules in the way that we've seen a lot of uh, GTs where Storm Ravens have been really prevalent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it, it's probably really wonky like that, too. Yeah. Um, his first opponent, though, was a uh, Blood Angels. Sad day. Blood Angels died. A um, bunch of characters, some Terminators, uh, some uh, Ballistas Dreadnoughts, and a Brutalist and a Redemptor. So just Dreadnoughts and some other big units to just kind of deal with. Honestly, yeah. those Thunderwolf Cav probably ate the living fuck out of that. Um, yeah, I think I think Red is well oh, yeah. built to deal with all those all those uh, yep. dreadnoughts. And then the next one, he played Nicholas Siegler, uh, and he was playing looks like CSM Abaddon, some Hellbrutes, some Destructors. I love the Predators in CSM. I, I like how they get yeah. all the extra stuff with them. It, it's super helpful. Um, just one Forge Fiend couple of slaneshi guys some raptors and some narglings so that, that could actually have been possibly a little bit of a of a good game for him to go up against and then, honestly playing playing csm that's probably describing the list that you described he probably cleaned that up no problem yeah while, the, so. while, while the predators are good they don't have the output really needed to deal with thunderwolf cav just barreling up the board yeah. Especially because especially Thunderwolf Cab do have that ability where they do have a D6 movement or a 6-inch movement, if I recall, mm -hmm. uh, if you get a little too close. So one wrong move and gotcha, here's a 6-inch move behind cover or whatever. I also so think CSM requires a lot of synergy. Like it needs to synergize yeah. very well. And if, it, if it, as soon as it misses that... What, um, and, and what is Abaddon even going in that list is my question. I don't know. I don't maybe know. just uh, annoying. Like maybe just deep striking annoying people. Yeah, yeah like, there's no way you throw him away like that, right? I would fuck. I mean, you, you he's too. Out. He's like <laughs> too expensive. He's got five legionaries, so you can put him with the legionaries. He's yeah, probably a, he's probably the center of a ball around. Oh, he's got a he's got a ten legionary unit. Yeah, he's probably so he's, he, he's doing the Lucius Master of Executions with legionaries, and then Abaddon with legionaries. You get two like 
big smash units. That could work yeah. pretty well. Unfortunately, yeah. too, I don't think two big smash units works very well against uh, this Space Wolves list because he has a decent amount of shooting. Yeah. And, the, the yeah, predators, and he's faster. Yeah, he's faster. And the Predators, as good as they are, aren't going to make up for the fact that the Space Wolves are going to be on grass turn one uh, yeah. at worst yep. turn two and just really kind of wreck your day. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. All right. Um, and then his last opponent was Robert Grimes playing Drakari. I actually think this is like... It could be an interesting matchup. Drakari are fucking disgusting right now. And he is playing the Sky Splinter Assault um, with just everything that you want in it. He's got a f like two 20-man Cabalites. He's got racks. That's the only thing I haven't really seen. But I actually think the racks he put inside of the Venoms. But he's got like They're four like Raiders, a squad of Scourges, some Mandrakes running around doing objective shit. The 10 Incubi, two Courts of the Archon, which aren't even like it, Courts of the Archon fuck around. A big, huge witch squad. I, I think this could have been a struggle a little bit for him. So, like, that's a solid win. Because Drakari is, is pretty decent right now. Drakari is pretty decent right now. However, it doesn't sound like he has the transports to really support and really make use of his attachment. He had, he had six transports. He had four raiders and two venoms. Yeah, but he has those 20 man uh, Cavalite warriors. No, no, they're, with... two, they're two 10 mans. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Never mind. I'm just mm -hmm. misunderstood. Oh yeah, yeah, no, two ten yeah, mans. Man. Uh, pretty, 20... pretty standard list. Yeah, it's, so it's... Can, so can opening that probably has to do with the eradicators either split firing. Um, I would imagine they'd have to split fire in that scenario. Yeah, drop in between two, split fire between two, blow up both. Yeah, eradicators on average should kill two raiders, and then your wolves just gobble up whatever comes out. Yeah, yeah, and and just the nature of. The way Drakari works is he's he kind of has to charge those Eradicators, so you get your free win swift evasion basically every turn. Yeah, yeah. A a no any kind of space brain list that um, really abuses going back into transport. Any anyone that's Dude, a I don't know. I, he's got he's got a bunch of damage too with those with those splinter cannons. I I would just shoot them and be like fuck it. Like I wouldn't even charge those those guys. I would shoot them with the splinter cannons and say fuck it and use the. Uh, Use the Cavalite Warriors to shoot them off the board. Yeah, I don't know. Just because they're, yeah, they're I mean, the anti-infantry, so it's it's helpful. I don't know. But, yeah. but your cavalry isn't infantry. No, I know, but then like once you delete... That, what, that's probably the real damage dealer in that list is the cav. But that's that, what's going to eat up. The, the cavalry shit. isn't going to be... They're, they're going to kill the vehicle, and then you now own whatever object, objective you're on when you get out. I think the Eradicators are killing the vehicles in that matchup. Yeah, and that's why I'm... Uh, yeah. They're, they're rerolling hits, wounds, and damage. Yep. And you, yeah. can, and you just split split the shit out of it. Split yeah. the shit out of it, and then the, the, the flyer picks up the last whatever, one or two. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yep. Well, hey, man, good job, Kyle. That's a strong win over at WarGamesCon, and you beat out David Hall. So I like it, dude. Dark Eldar, hard, hard matchup for you. Strong <laughs> good job. Work. I, mm -hmm. Dude, I think Dark Eldar is like they're just in that weird spot. They're either there and you have the tools to deal with them, or you don't. I think he, I think he did. So like, I think that's that's solid. Do, do you have a can opener, or do you not? That's really what yeah. It comes down as soon to as right those now. transports goes down, it's a completely different game. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. So our next one is going to be Dragon's Lair, the March RTT. Um, this is going to be a looks like eight man event, and our winner for this one, what the shit, is okay. going to be. Uh, Scott uh, Kosian, and that's going to be another Tau Empire list. Love seeing Tau in these last couple weeks before they get their codex. Got, yeah, he's got two Fireblades, a uh, Cold Star Commander with Exemplar of the Kalyan, um, a Commander in Enforcer Battle Suit with Precision of the Patient Hunter. I don't actually know what Precision of the Patient Hunter does. That is going to be add one to hit rolls and add one to wound roll or wound rolls as well. That's actually can be really good. Um, and just for example, the Kalyan as well, they get to use that Kalyan detachment um, one battle round or in the second battle round onwards instead of uh, in the third, fourth, and fifth. And then one uh, ethereal or ethernal, ether, ether, ethereal, ethereal, one ethereal. Jesus, English is hard. Um, it is. Two Breacher Squads, just 10-man Breachers. Two Devil Fishes, obviously, for those Breachers to go inside of. A Broadside Battlesuit. I haven't actually seen these guys that much on the table since they keep getting points increases. 
Um, and he has them with the looks like heavy rail rifles too. So I like I like seeing it, man. That 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 squad can dish out some damage if you get the right lines of fire, because they are just in the end of the day kind of slow. Two uh, shots each at uh, strength twelve, AP four, D six plus one, dev wounds and yep. heavy. Yeah, that's that's pretty not not okay. Yeah. <laughs> they, can, that. they just they just move so slow. You got to position them really well, and like they used to be a lot more durable. I think. Um, five, five, in, five inch movement with a 60 inch range on them means that they can really lock down a corner or, you know, the center or whatever they need to do. Yep. So. Yeah. And it's weird now with the battlesuits having that vehicle keyword, just because they can't like it depending it's terrain dependent. They can actually get bogged down just by terrain by only having that five inch movement. Cause if they run into a wall, it can take them almost two turns depending on where they're at on that wall to get all the way around it. Tau have been needing that update, though, on their suits. They're going to hate me all for saying that yeah. <laughs> for, for since, since they came out, to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, he has Spoiler one... alert. Uh, good meta for, for these picks, by the way, if we're wondering. Yeah. Um, he yep. has one unit of Crisis Battle Suits, all decked out with plasma rifles and some cyclic ions. He's not running max cyclic ions. He's actually running more plasma rifles. Two units of Crute Hounds. We already talked about what they did before. Uh, Pathfinder squad, another Pathfinder team, and then one Riptide. A squad of Stealth Suits is actually going to be really good because they have Infiltrate, I'm pretty sure. And you can yep. kind of turn off your opponent's ability to do any pregame moves or coming in on that turn one or turn two, possibly. And then two Tetras giving out those rerolls to whoever they mark for. So that's super good, actually. I like, I like this list as well. I don't think there's like a super bad Tau list out there. Like, it just shoots very well. Scott was playing up against Austin Goobler for his first opponent. Austin was playing Death Guard. Oh, I hate to see it. Yep, with Morty. Yeah, and this Death Guard list does not have a lot of anti-vehicle. Um, recently started playing Death Guard. It was one of their big things that I saw is that if something even has the vehicle keyword or is kind of remotely hard to take off the table... It can be very difficult to play into, so hate to see that one. Good job, Scott, for for winning that, that one. That's probably what he's bringing his Morty for, to be completely honest. But the issue is that Morty can be played around. He's only one model in the entire game. Yep. So you just avoid yep. him or accept that he's going to kill one model. And okay, cool. You brought five hundred points. No, I kill one unit a turn. Yeah. Awesome. Have at it. Okay, cool. By the time that you're done the game. You maybe got your points back, and I've killed the rest of your entire army. It's easy. Yeah, I don't even know if Morty does it too for him because uh, as soon as he pops Morty out, that guy has those uh, broadsides yeah. that can just nuke Morty. Yep. Um, broadside the crisis. Yeah. Like, yeah. Assuming it's that they all hit wound and go through because they're only strength twelve. What is Morty toughness twelve or is he thirteen or is he just? I don't think he's thirteen. He, if anything, he's twelve or eleven. I I am I am positive. Uh, he's not thirteen. That'd be that'd be interesting if he was. I know the uh, the Lord of Skulls are thirteen, which is just insane. T twelve. T twelve. Okay, so they're T12. wounding on fours, hitting on threes. Yep. It, it, they're it's... not. They're not gonna one shot him because he still does have. Does he have a field of pain these days? He does. It's just he not does, that yeah. good. Yeah, they're not gonna nuke him, but yeah. they're gonna severely cripple him. So he's got to watch out where he goes. Yeah. Um, after that, he played Cast Knights. That's an easy win. <laughs> Bunch of War Dogs. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of the tools to to eat that to eat that list apart. And then the last one is going to be Stephen Scott. This last list. Astro Militarum okay. titled Tanks 2.0. So I'm guessing there's a fuck ton of tanks, and there is a fuck ton of tanks. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously he has the tools to eat through these fuck ton of tanks. This also, though, yeah. might... I don't know, man. He's got so many tanks, it's going to be a lot harder to hide that compared to hiding that Tau list. Um, so if that Tau list can just hide and then pop out once the tanks pop out, he obviously is is pretty easy to deal with all those tanks with the amount and, of shooting that he has. That's good. So in, in a guard versus Tau, that really does come down to he goes first. Yeah. But this Tau list is small enough to where he can really hide, especially with those infiltrate units. Oh, yeah. He can hide in the midboard. He can hide in his deployment. He's not having scrub units like Crute Hounds clog up his own deployment in the sections where he needs to hide his important heavy hitters. Yep. So th this is just yep. a really another instance of Tau players adopting to their meta and <laughs> learning to play the game. I mean, because I mean, 
a lot of the town players just want to play that triple riptide and just sit in their deployment all game, munching on a hot dog, eat, shooting you off the board. But <laughs> that, that's not how the game plays anymore, unfortunately. No, so you do have to score points, and that's yeah, what the yeah, list had yeah. with you know crude hounds, all that kind of stuff. And we, you know, we talked about it last week. Like there, there are times where I'm sure all of us have been tabled, but we beat our opponents on points. Yeah, and exactly. It's just like here you go, yeah. bud. Like enjoy. I have and no models left, but I win. <laughs> I, I could just feel it in my soul how how bad it feels when you have you know three Rogaldorans and five Lehman Russes when you pick up investigate signals on, turn, <laughs> on the go turn and you're like, son of a bitch, yeah. I don't score <laughs> this turn. Yeah. And, and, and these catalysts are great examples of armies that can deal with that. They oh, get yeah. that turn two or three, and they go, okay, not optimal, but I'm going to get four points on it. Yeah. And you know what? That's more points than they would have gotten if they did trip time. So, yep. well, hey man, hey, good job to him for winning that uh, Dragon's Lair RTT man. Um, our second to last one is going to be the CGG March RTT. Uh, that was over in Dallas, Texas. Oh, Dallas, cool. good old Dallas. Dude, it's crazy to me how many every every single fucking weekend. There are so many RTTs in Texas. I love it, man. It's it's so much happening in texas like coming from mississippi love mississippi love the players there but there was like one event a month <laughs> well, and now I mean, dallas like, is also like triple the size yeah of like all of mississippi yeah you're not yeah. wrong <laughs> um but yeah so our our first place winner for this uh cgg um what the fuck does cgg even stand for it doesn't have anything common ground games oh, that makes sense common ground games and Being from Dallas, I know all the game store stuff. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, and our first place is Christian Alisi. Really good player. Uh, great guy. Fantastic dude to play against. And if you ever have the chance, ask him to see his UN painted uh, IG. They they look fantastic. His... Christian's a great player <laughs> and a great guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was playing Tau Empire, uh, titled KDLD. Not sure what that is. Uh, all right. He's playing Tau. He's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> um and and very similar to kind of what we saw before so we've got cadre fireblade exemplar kalyan shadow sun long strike breacher 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 only three this time though but instead of only having one devil fish he has three four devil four. fishes i yeah. i honestly like seeing the four devil fishes i think it's it's one of those things it's is if you don't have a can opener you can't get inside you know um three hammerhead gunships instead of running long strike uh which i actually Oh, no, he has Longstrike, too. So it's the four uh, Hammerhead gunships. And then a Pathfinder team, a Riptide, three Riptides, and two Tetras. This looks oddly similar to uh, a list that was played at a certain event that we just went to. Um, what the hell was that event? Yeah, Clutch. This looks, like, uh, this looks like Justin Moore's list. Justin Moore's a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Um, super similar. And it's I wonder if... He, Dude, it's, I mean, it's that, so much, and it, but I, I, I honestly think that he might have brought that because of the other people in his meta. I mean, there, there is something about wanting to see how something plays. You see yep. something win the GT, and you go and try out a variation of it with tweaker yeah. here, here and there um, to fit not, your play style. Not gonna lie, I just opened up the list of the the person that got second place at their event, which is Chan Latman, and he is running one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, uh, six, that, that's, uh, that's six. Chad Latham. Oh, um, Chad, Chad Latham, or Latham, sorry. Yeah. But he's running six different uh, dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts yes. plus a bunch of vehicles. So, honestly, that Talus fucking wrecks face into that. Um, but, yeah, let's right, see. If, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Chad also went 3 0. I think there's two 3 0s in that event. Yeah, no, I think the other uh, three. Joni, Joni did as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, so for Christian, he played against Robert Irving uh, round one, and that's going to be... Oh, yeah, where's this, where's this army? Oh, Astra Militarum. We, we just talked yeah. about this. I, I think that it that can be a very they're very hard matchup with Astra what, Militarum. What is this guard player playing in this? Uh, he's, playing, uh, he's playing some weird shit. Uh, he's playing two Hades Breaching Drills, um, a Shadow Sword... Uh, Ooh, shadow sword. Right. We're, yeah. we're already off to a bad start. All right. We can <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, riders, it's a weird list. Yeah. His next one was against uh, Pramini Tex. And that's Space Marine, Iron Hands, Firestorm Assault Force. Really expecting to see some vehicles in this one, but it looks like a bunch of kind Super of. Super aggressors. 
Yeah, and then one one land raider redeemer. Um, mm -hmm. But honestly, dude, with the three, even just the three riptides alone, it has a really easy way to deal with a lot of this list. Um, there's just so much shooting. Sometimes when you play that card where you're like, hey, I have a shooting army, you have a shooting army, it's kind of like a dice roll, and then it's like... Who goes first? And sometimes not even well, who goes first now, because it's it's actually really easy to hide a lot of lists in terrain. It's actually, you kind of want second, it's like, come on out and see what happens. And I know the common ground, RTT, is pretty heavy when it comes to terrain. I think they have a WTC uh, sort of style. They use Texas o or TXO's terrain. Okay. So... So it's a little bit on the heavier side. Yeah, so you're um, definitely probably wanting to go second on that one, and it's like, hey, you know, make yeah. that mistake of being seen first. Yeah, um, come out, come out to play, and I'll, I'll shoot you off. <laughs> yeah, and then his his last opponent was Chaos Knights, and that's that's a, that's a slaughter right there. Yep. Like, that's that's four to five of those war dogs that it's turned. Check, check. It, yep. it, it really is nice, though. Again, I, we're going to go on the same tangent on how players really adopting their meta. Yep. Um, but the breachers, for example, really do check a box that Tau have been missing or intentionally not wanting through a mental block or whatever it may be of, well, if I get close to my opponent, that's just doing what my opponent wants. I need to stay back with long range shooting. Yeah. Where Christian here is really adopting to the new play style of 10th edition. He's moving up these double switch, disembarking, and then blasting off his opponent from objectives that this is mine now. You can't have it. Sorry. <laughs> yep. 100%. All right, guys, our last one is going to be the Battle Pub March RTT happening here in San Antonio. I think there's like 12 players. What do we get? You didn't do uh, 16. Oh, 16 players. Actually, that's pretty. That's one I thought it was. And the second place winner for that one, because the first place winner is a douchebag. We're not going to talk about him. Uh, the second place <laughs> yeah, winner for that one. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't just go around calling people douchebags all too much. I, I won first. I just didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> be, be too rude about it but yeah it was uh, it was uh you are a douchebag though. i know i am a douchebag uh but it was nick toomey <laughs> and that's he was he was playing sisters that's our faction focus for this week is sisters all right nick i'm gonna let you talk about your list man what, what do we what do we have at this event dude oh man well let me pull it up oh, you son of a bitch. all right i'll read it then all right so <laughs> i got it i got it i got it he played cosmic uh, pokemon be gone i just want this to be known that's what you named it um, Hell yeah! <laughs> is there a reason behind that? Yeah, because I just murder Satans with this list. Oh god, Pokemon <laughs> Satan! I get it. I get Thanks, it. Man. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk that about was, what you got was, then. Yeah. yeah so uh, your standard <laughs> stuff, you take uh, Vol with the Paragons. That's that big uh, anvil unit. Kind of come in and just you know run through whatever it can get to. Yep. Um, I've taken Junith for that extra CP. Um, I feel like if you are running Mormon Vol, you really need to save CP for her, and Judith makes me have CP for Vol, and to kind of fuel some of the other units that I've taken, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, I went back to the Triumph for this RTT to, to kind of test her out a little bit. Um, How'd you like Having it? that weight? I, I mean, I like it. It's, you know, it's not the best unit in my list, but um, I like, I just really like having that late game kind of beat stick melee but also oc6 model because yeah. once you get to turn once you get to, to round five there's not a lot of oc left on the board and you can kind of get free objectives doing huh. that kind of thing it's it's an 18 um, wound model right yeah 18 it's six cannon s's on the base basically if you think about it that way it all makes sense for so, 125 points 125 points three up save four up involved that's so fucking, i can res her that's so it's, fucking uh, good totally it's only key three though. <laughs> yeah, but I, I get that, but um, it's still like it, I, as somebody that's tried every time to like, I'm always like, all right, this time I'll kill Saint Catherine, even mm -hmm. if I do, he fucking reses it, and like I, I yeah, just need to commit my attacks to other stuff in that army. So I, I like Saint Catherine. Yeah, yeah, and and another important function of that triumph too is it guarantees that I'm going to get a miracle six by the time Morbin comes in. Yeah, uh, which is super important. Um, I'm usually rapid ingressing her, but sometimes I don't have the ability to do that. Um, so that kind of helps me do that. And if I don't need it, I can use that six somewhere else. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so preacher, I take. I've taken the preacher. I didn't take a palatine this time. I took the preacher with the blade of Saint Eleanor, um, just because 
The preacher already gets a once per game extra uh, attacks and strength. And then you put the blade of sail or on top of that, this dude can be strength eight with like six attacks, all three damage. Uh, he's going to be plus one a boon because he's going to be leading Arco flagellants. And then, you know, the Arco flagellants are hard to kill. So maybe you get an extra turn of that and then you can res him, do it all over again. Yep. Great. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, that uh, that blade of Saint Helen or Saint Eleanor gives two to attacks, strength, and damage for all the melee weapons. That's fucking good. So, so it actually him, gives, if it's taking wounds. Yeah. yeah. So oh, it's only it's yeah, it's plus one unless it takes wounds. Plus one unless he's under half. Right. That's still um, so good. <laughs> yeah. So when you res him, you you res him with one miracle dice, and then he gets the full full crazy. Um, so yeah, that's the characters. Uh, I've taken Battle Sisters because I actually like Dominions better. Um, if you're going for pure damage, but Battle Sisters, I think, um, are just great for building up a Miracle Ice pool. Okay. Um, and, uh, that's pretty much all they're good for in my eyes. Like the multi melt and melting gun are nice, but you know, normally they don't do anything. Yeah. Super important. Um, two Arc of Flagellant units. Uh, a unit of Crusaders, just amazing for doing actions. Yep. Um, and then I've taken two Repentia Squad, which I've been loving. I think they're awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, at 110 <laughs> points, the value is just super, super good. Me, me and James are just talking good. about this. They're so good. Yeah, they're, they the people crying on the internet about Repentia are just totally unfounded. I think they're amazing. And if you're fueling them with CP... Which is another reason why Junith is in the list. Yep. Um, plus one to wound. They, all that. Plus one to wound. Fight on death. Like it's the possibilities are endless, and they will, they will get more than their points every game. Hell yeah! Exactly what I want them to do. Repentia are one of those units. Again, I know we covered this at the very beginning, but on paper they don't look as good as what they used to be. But when you put them on the table, people still respect that you have Repentia and will act accordingly. Especially mm-hmm. if it's oh here's my ten blocker Repentia, by the way, <laughs> yeah, but their right. reputation precedes them. Oh yeah, and you know you look at their attacks and they're like oh they're two attacks each like okay you're not going to clear hordes really with this unit wounds. it's so nice it's good you're not gonna you're not gonna clear like a you know like a unit of pink horrors with this lit, with this unit you might but it's kind of iffy but if you kind of look at this unit as like an anti-tank unit it's strength six so unless you're t12 or above and i do plus one to wound i'm wounding you on fours with four girls yep so if you look at it like an anti-tank unit it it starts to click a little and, bit is the, is the plus one to wound is that from uh cp That's just one cp crap. okay yeah just one cp Anti-tank or anti-elite infantry, because the meta yeah. right now is really kind of going towards a chunkier meta. It's very, yes. very rare that you'll see horde. Uh, even though I know Tyranids, for example, are a really good example of what can, yeah. what a horde can do. But Repentia are just a top pick. Yeah, yeah. And strength six is kind of like the new, the new strength five almost. It, like it's really good in the Terminators. It's really good in elite infantry, and it's like yeah. I said, it's really good for. You're you're also getting to, rerolled to, a wound, right? Yes. If you charged. If you charge, I'll yeah, charge, yeah yes. that's super. And, and you keep your sergeant alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and you can kind of get get cute with them. Like if you lose like five or six of them, you can start taking wounds on the superior. Um, with that three up save to kind of like try to keep them alive because you know you, you keep her in cover a little bit. Yep. Um, and another important thing I for, almost forgot to mention, because you have that superior in power armor, she's got grenades. <laughs> So you can soften up something. I've, yeah, I've experienced this. Where I was like, "How the fuck do they have grenades?" <laughs> yep. Yep. Do they do they lose yep. grenades once she dies, or they just have that keyword with them? No, they just have the grenade keyword. That's so stupid. They're like, yeah, they, same thing. Same thing they with their, it, uh, they should lose it because only the superior actually has that keyword. Let me see. I thought that I thought the whole unit had it. Uh oh. No, it's the A dude. It's the whole squad. Yeah. Yeah, there's no keyword for and, that uh, specific sergeant. So they're just like they butt ass uh, naked running around with grenades. Right. <laughs> pick up pick up the grenades off her body. Keep yeah. 
And the the superior also gets that feeling of pain now. Yep. So yes. you have a she can be actually truly annoying to kill if she's in cover and you're just shooting her with storm bolts or something. But yeah, especially against the preferred method of clear and repentia, which is just no AP, low strength yep. shots. It's just okay. Well, I'm going to take this on. I only got like four or five left. I'd rather take this on the superior than the actual uh, repentia that are just going to die to that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a nice little pocket thing, especially when you're like, okay, well, hey, you kill her, just her, I get plus one hit and wound anyway through my base ability. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then did you yeah, talk? Uh, did you talk about the cascaders yet? No. So uh, let's see. Moving on, I've got the unit of five seraphim with flamers, just okay. awesome, uh, just backline harassment unit. Yeah. Uh, I went triple castigator, so I dropped my exorcists and went triple castigator. Disgusting. Uh, Double auto cannon, which I which I have always loved. Auto cannons are the truth, and I will fight anybody about that. All right, we're um, gonna fight after this. <laughs> <laughs> I took one battle cannon, uh, which is, you know, it's okay, it's all right. Uh, after seeing the battle cannon on the, the field, I I don't know, I, I I miss seeing your exorcist. Yeah, I mean, so here's the deal, right? Like the castigator. As far as the damage goes, mm -hmm. like the exorcist will out damage the castigator, especially when you factor miracle dice in. Yeah. Uh, but the castigator is going to be in the fight more. Okay. And it's cheaper and it allows I, me to bring more stuff. I'm going to disagree with that last point that it's in the fight more because the fact, just through the simple fact that it's a direct line of sight gun, it's not going to be in the fight more because your opponent has more opportunities to take it out than if it's a indirect gun similar to an exorcist but that's just my two cents yeah I, and okay i wasn't I, I should i should clarify that like it's not going to be shooting all the time but the threat of it being in a certain part of the board will always be there so I my guess. my question is is that if you do take out We'll ask us. Go go through the rest of your list. I have yeah, yeah, go through the rest of your list, and then, and then we'll we'll fight yeah. about sisters. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll have a cat fight. <laughs> yeah, and then we've got the paragons we already talked about because they pretty much are attached to the ball. Yeah, um, that's that's, that's one of those auto takes now. Auto takes. Yeah, you and I've yeah. seen people doing another unit of them. I don't hate it. I don't think it's great, but you know, I, I see people of. Uh, doing like the opposite, essentially with a melee weapon loadout. So obviously, you go all melt the all grenade up top, and then yeah. you do two swords, one mace for your That's ball right. unit. And then people take a second unit; they go two maces, one sword. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. I see oh, as okay. a second unit choice. Yeah, with is, storm bolters too, which is kind of yeah. Kinda that I, I don't understand that personally, but uh, I respect with the re rolls. It's it's okay. But I like the grenade launchers. I, I, I like the respect your tactics. You do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, got the one emulator to split up the battle sisters so I can potentially move them to that off objective, get yep. the, potentially get extra miracle dice. Um, got the one rhino, which houses Repentia, which is awesome because people shoot my rhino. They're like, oh, I have to kill the Repentia. They shoot my rhino <laughs> and they get out. One of them dies to the explosion. And now you've just given me plus one to hit. Thank you very much. You have 10 and they get even better. better. 20 Repentia. So basically, I'm I'm recycling through the Rhino if it's still alive. And if it's not, then, you know, I can just, you know, they move seven now, so you're just running around the board. So you yeah. actually ground pound one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of boards now the are Calibus set up to be able to do that. that. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh, yes and no, in my opinion. Uh, back in the day when our... You know, we'll get into this later. Yeah. Go, go through your list. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it. I've got the... Yeah, I got the Calidus to, to finish it out because I well, played We'll go through your uh, matchups then. Okay. Yeah. Um, so his matchups were... Tyler Kimbrell? Yep. Um, what's Tyler got? He's got Chaos Knights. Dude, you just eat into that. Um, yeah, Morven Vol alone just eats like three to four War Dogs when she comes in. Yeah, I think I killed three turn one. And another three and a big knight on the second yeah. turn. How did how Pretty did you kill them to be on the with, with shooting or how how you killing yep. those? Yeah, yep. I think I got one repentia charge and then the castigators picked up another couple of yeah. them. Yeah. Three yep. castigators should pick up one by themselves. I guess you started with more of it on the board for that one. I do I do reserve one castigator, but um if I remember correctly, the hunter killer is actually hit and wounded 
So <laughs> it's no always doubt. good. <laughs> yeah. You're a liar. They don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was my one game. Okay. <laughs> um, your next person that you played was Shane Wilson. And this is a big monster yep. mash uh, sort of list of Tyranids, it looks like. Yeah, um, kind of a newer player to 10th edition. I was kind of able to leverage the fact that he didn't he didn't really have any experience with sisters. Okay. Um, so I kind of, I like, I, I believe turn one, I moved up Repentia, like kind of moved him out. And he, it kind of spooked him. So he pulled his, his Termagants off the middle objective. And then I just charged his one of his big bugs and killed that with the Repentia. Hmm. Um, so I both forced him off the objective and then hit a bug with it. Um, Arc of Flagellants went into Carnifexes, of all things, and the Carnifexes That's kind of lost crazy. to that fight. Jesus. Yep, even with a two-up save. Yep. Huh. And uh, and then Vol came in from reserve, uh, tank shocked a Trigon, killed it with the tank shock, and then I piled <laughs> into a to rent effects and basically killed that immediately. And it from there it was kind of game over. Yeah, that's like half his list from what he just listed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um and then your last opponent was David Villarreal, who runs mm -hmm. uh I right know it's kinda like a hybrid chicken and walker list. He has less chicken mm -hmm. walkers, still has a fuck ton, but less than what he's normally running and just a bunch of kind of random things. Some sulfur hounds. I think he was just testing some stuff out. How'd that one go yeah. for you? He told me at the end it, it wasn't his favorite uh, detachment. He ran the index detachment. Yeah. So he did all his mortals to me, gave my entire army plus one to hit right off the bat. Yep. Um, and then not, not a good plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe he shot the battle cannon castigator three times with the big uh, last cannon breacher breacher oh, unit shit. and failed to kill it. Um. So that Maybe. was just. The battle cannon castigator just did not want to die. It was just, you know, kind of holding down its own <laughs> flank while I positioned uh, kind of in, in that kind of triangle formation on that sites of power mission to hmm. kind of hold it, hold my triangle and just win the ball game. Oh, hell yeah. Well, good job, man. All right, let's, yeah. uh, let's tear apart your list and talk about sisters a little bit more. Um, so I, I have like, I have one question and then I'll let, I'll let yeah. James rip into it a little bit more and then we'll talk to James a little bit about like what his thoughts are on just where sisters are and, and um, we'll, we'll talk about the list for just a little bit longer than I want to ask you guys some other questions, but, um, castigator drop, if you did bring in the executioner, right, to drop a castigator, where do you get the other 40 points from in this list? Like, where do you find that to be the, that replacement port? So I don't I don't like one exorcist. I think if you're going to take exorcist, you need at two or three. Okay, so then what are you dropping to get that? Are you dropping? The list kind of is it's it's kind of a transformative change. You kind of yeah. lose the castigator. I think for me, it's kind of the castigator and two repentia squads. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you want, I can go over my latest list. It's got two castigators, yeah. two exorcists in it. <laughs> there you go. Yo, let's talk about it. What, uh, what you got, James. So this is a list I or variation I brought to an RTT recently. Okay. Um, I I hate that I just played baby seals. I just clubbed away, but <laughs> I I hate they doing that. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, they, 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 they gotta learn. They gotta learn. They gotta learn the same way I did. Okay, get yeah, your ass kicked exactly. a few times and you come back stronger. Where, if you don't um, if you don't beat baby seals, where do we get all this oil for lamps? Like <laughs> that's where no oil comes from. Yeah. And black people are yeah. The whales have had it too good for too long, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first of all, I didn't have any enhancements in my list. Um, I tried to play I really don't like the the Avengers team sisters list. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, here's the Triumph St. Catherine, here's Morvin Vol, here's St. Celestine, here's uh, Judith Arita. Yep. I, I hate I hate those lists because they're like 700 points of characters. Yeah. So yeah. mine, I tried to cut it down to uh, just 360. <laughs> <laughs> A cool 360. <laughs> cool 360. Um, so I have an Imagine Fire, no upgrades on that. I have Judith Arita, Morvin Vol. Auto take. Uh, Judith Arita, yeah. I think, is an auto take in Sisters as well. I don't see how you can make a list without her, to be completely honest, uh, because you're so reliant on CP with Sisters. You really do need that to a turn. It does make it, it does make you better at playing the game because you can spend the one CP to redraw a card. Yeah, it makes um, fix, going fixed nicer too. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and then I have a Palantine 
Um, I wish I could have squeezed in the points for their St. Eleanor, but uh, this is just due to a model issue. <laughs> I, and she's I, she's honestly fine on her own. I found. I did. I just I wanted the St. Eleanor, but I didn't have enough time to fit all my novitiates together. So I mm. ditched all the different uh, enhancements and swapped out novitiates for a uh, retributor squad. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just because that's what I had available. Uh, single battle nice. sister squad. Mm-hmm. I know most people go for two or three. I really hate three. Two is probably about the sweet spot. But I, uh, I, I think one works really well, honestly. Like seeing them on the table a lot. Like I, I think one works well, very well. I don't have any emulators, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the there's the issue. Um, let's see. I have double rhino because I have double repentia. Okay. Um, I find that rhinos, pe- people will shit on like an empty rhino, but it's 75 points. Yeah. And if it doesn't die getting the repentia to where they need to be, an empty rhino is to most people not a threat. So they will just completely ignore it, I find. Yeah. And it's hilarious if you either charge this empty rhino into, hey, that's a nice bane blade. It'd really suck if you were minus one to hit, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or 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 you just you, you go and you do actions with it. An empty rhino is a toolbox of mischief. Like it's just, <laughs> I have it, killed I have killed a satan with a rhino tank shock before. Okay, I got one better. <laughs> Ninth edition, I tabled a thousand suns player with a single rhino. Goddamn! What? <laughs> I, okay, so here, so he had his entire army balled up. And I yeah. charge the rhino into rubrics, and I spent one CP. If you fail a test, uh, you perils. Another CP, if you do mortals to this rhino, it has a four up against it. And he did <laughs> oh, shit. He did forty mortals to himself and to the rhino, and I just rolled super hot on my four ups. <laughs> the rhino survived until the fight phase. Holy shit. Oh, the, and he like ate right right tabled himself. Dude. That's nice. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the rhinos are the best unit in the game. I will fight yeah. anyone that says otherwise. Uh, <laughs> they're amazing. They're amazing. Uh, uh, so double Rhino, uh, double Castigator, Battle Cannons all the way, uh, just because I need the reroll hit against vehicles, because I always find that I struggle in the vehicle heavy metas, personally. So the reroll adds a little bit extra there. I'm not too concerned about heavy infantry. Um, and also the ignores cover on the Battle Cannon. It's just cash money. I can't give that up for, I think, Auto Cannons give reroll wounds, if I remember correct. Yes. Yeah, for... Which, which is huge is great but i really want my ap to go through because in my current in my meta people are spamming like chad you saw uh all these two up fucking dreads everywhere yeah <laughs> so if if i don't have ignore cover it's just oh here's my two up saves all day long honestly so that, that makes is, that makes a little sense you're gearing towards your meta and there's nothing wrong with that that's there's like nothing wrong with that so two up saves two up save spam is something i found just really i can't deal with um hmm. so the next thing i have here is double exorcist uh, the big cannon, obviously, you know, D6 yeah. plus two shots, uh, yeah. heavy, indirect, all that deal. Two of them, I I think is perfect. Three, I used to play with three before the initial points increase, and then you know they decreased not to where they were. Three yeah. was a lot of fun. Uh, two, I think, is a sweet spot, especially with the castigators, because it's a dual threat. If your opponent's playing really cagey, you can just kind of like poke and prod them to coming out to play, and yeah. then you punish them with the castigator. That makes sense. Um, I, I really like the, the combo of both. Uh, I have one Mortifier. Yeah, I, used I like to, it. I, I used to run two, and I used to run Penny and Engines, uh, but people went away from Horde-style lists, so Pen Engines kind of went out the way of the Dodo, because yeah. AP nothing uh, doesn't yeah. do much, unfortunately. And that 4-up save it does not. Just, yeah. The 4-up save wasn't actually an issue. It was I really like them for an Overwatch threat, because here's 4d6, Strength 5, Twin Linked, so if you had, like, I tabled one person that was playing orcs because he just had a bunch of boys and beast nagas. So it was like, oh, hey, you got out of your truck to go charge these Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's 10, 10 guys gone. All right, you're going to charge me. Okay, with the last two remaining. Cool. <laughs> good good talk. I'm going to table you there. Um, so Mortifiers, they're great. Paragons, because, mm-hmm. of course, why wouldn't you? Double 10-man Repentia, because they're amazing. Uh, Repentia is great. I, yep. I can't say enough good things about them. Uh, Seraphim, Zeraphim, 
uh, what is it called? Uh, and the, Zer the, the Zerafim are the melee ones, correct? Yep. Yeah, and I wanted to try them for this list because they got a points decrease. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really like 60 points, and they're just five girls base. It's a good little harassing unit, uh, and it's cheaper than Seraphim. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's a worse ability. They're a worse unit, but <laughs> <laughs> I, needed, I needed the 10 points. So that, and that's it. I don't have a Calidus in this list either. That was another thing I wanted to try. Oh, no Calidus. No Calid. I figured that the Seraphim and the Zeraphim, as well as just the forward momentum of the list, would be enough to kind of deal with that. And did you uh, Did you bring any Crusaders either? No, no Crusaders. Okay, this was cool. a this was an outside of my comfort zone list. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, like as I was talking, Lou, to you earlier, when I won Best Sisters at ATC, only playing five out of six games, <laughs> I, <laughs> I ran like three Crusaders, a bunch of Crusaders, and a bunch of uh, Death Cult Assassins. And I ran like the just spamming a bunch of little units everywhere. It makes um, it, it scores it, well. Like it scores well, but my one loss was to knights <laughs> at oh, that event because yeah. I just I had two exorcists and I couldn't do shit against the knights. So and yeah. and vehicles seem to definitely be the meta right now. So <laughs> you got to plan for that. Unfortunately, I, I hate the two ups two up spam vehicles everywhere to cover these days. Okay. Well, it seems like you guys are each on different sides of the boards. Like we have the same army, but a, a lot different lists. Like they're definitely built significantly different. Um, so my questions are to you guys and this, I'm going to start with Nick first. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Nick, you give your answer and then James, you give yours after Nick. What is your worst matchup that you can go into? Um, I haven't actually played it yet, but I've been told it's Custodes. Now, I think my list does a little bit better into Custodes, and I really am itching to, to play that matchup. Okay. Then what's... Um, but I really don't want to see Custodes. Okay. Of, of things that you've played into, what's your, what's your least matter? Like, what's your least favorable um, matchup? You know, I feel like I have a fighting chance against pretty much everything. Which okay. is kind of why I think sisters are, you know, high A tier. Yeah. Um, but I'll say guard is can be tough and gene stealing cults can be tough. Nice. Cool. But you know. All right, James. Same same question, man. What what do you think your least favorable matchup is is with this list that you have? So not necessarily the list, but my play style. I don't like playing Satan spam. <laughs> okay. They, because I we play a lot of people here that play either three to five satan, and they just go God, forward. Fucking five satan. Oh. Yeah, if you play that, you're a dick. <laughs> 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 Which I mean, I understand tank shock exists, right? Uh, Freaking what's it called? Morbid ball should do something, but satan to me, I, I also just I don't like playing necrons personally. Okay. Um, custodies can be an issue. It just depends on how often they're going to make those three up saves because yep. sisters AP is a problem. Sisters do not have a good anti tank solution. Yeah, dude, playing and against playing against the other day, right? if if yeah. they if they make those saves, there's no way to deal with that army, man. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and I was just going to say, like, real quick, uh, a huge portion of our damage outside of you know the standard AP zero, AP one stuff is coming out of things like. Tank shock and grenades, yep. which yep. custodies get the feeling of pain against. Yeah. Which is something why I think somewhere in some beautiful world, um, <laughs> retribut retributors still have a spot. They're just, coming back. People are they, running them now. They just need to mm -hmm. not hit on fours because I can't roll a four up to hit to save my life. Yeah. And retributors are the Melta girls, right? Yes. The, okay. the old heavy weapon squad. Yeah. Okay. So then, good job on that one, guys. You answered that pretty well. Uh, James, what's your best matchup? What, what do you like to go into the most? So when I was running the Triumph, uh, I really enjoyed going into GSC. Okay. Because I would run her by herself, and she does 18 attacks. Yeah. And I'd spend one CP for plus one to wound. Yeah. And now she's doing, she's basically crunching a 20 man down to two dudes or four dudes kind of deal. Because it's two ups, two ups. Yeah. And it cuts right through. And it's like, cool, you can't come back. And, um, you're probably going to feel battle shock and I have more OC than you at the end of the day. So yeah, worst That's... case scenario, you're neutered best case scenario. You're, you know, you're, you're there, but you're locked in combat. I really liked GSC. I'm, and... 
Space Marines are a lot of fun to play again too. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I I still love the Triumph, man. Like even with the nerfs that it got, I think the Triumph's really fucking strong. And and just watching it on the board, I'm always like, fuck the Triumph. <laughs> I just I mean the nerfs really. The, I think the Triumph nerf was the worst nerf that we got. Yeah. But all it does is like, okay, I'm not taking this combo unit. The only Big deal, I, I can buy more stuff now. Cool. Yeah. I, I I don't remember many people actually competitively winning events with the what was the reason for the triumph nerf, which was uh, retributors with the dialogus, because you'd have eight melt the shots and you just go, here's eight hits, here's eight theoretically, right? Here's eight hits, here's eight wounds, here's eight sixes for damage. Yeah. That was the theoretical. That yeah. was never really practical. In my experience, I played with the battle sisters with the Palantina dialogus. Yeah. And you'd go, here's three sixes to hit. Those are all lethals. Give me three Melta saves. Yep. You fail two. Here's six damage. Which yeah. was yeah. a much which was a much more realistic goal. Um, so limiting that down to two melt to two, um, I, I think as much as it sucks, it actually opened up sisters to taking other options. Hmm. Not due to a fault of the triumph now is horrible. Never take her. I still think she's viable. Yeah, oh yeah, I, she's great. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, like what? Whether their hundred twenty point character has eighteen wounds. <laughs> yeah, Dude, it's it's. Well, we start talking about resin characters, you know. Yeah. Okay, uh, as soon as you start talking about <laughs> resin, it's just out. Like. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, Nick, same question, man. What is your what is your more favorable or favorite matchup to like kind of play into? Um. I, I would say that any army that skews super heavily into big units, I deal with very easily. Okay. So, like, big nids, uh, knights. Um, my army specifically, Satan, easy money. Yeah. I mean, um, you even named it. Yeah, that just kills the, the fucking cosmic yep. Pokemon. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, I, I roll up to those, and I'm like, well, this is a win. Like, unless I something seriously goes wrong. Uh, those are those are pretty much, you know, in the bag already before before the game even starts. Hell yeah! Well, cool. Well, hey, thank you guys. Yeah. Honestly, like, I think you guys tore into that sisters meta pretty hard, man. Like, we we talked about two very different lists, um, and you guys are both very good players in Texas playing sisters. So, like, thank you for that. I I, I think that gave a really clear picture of where sisters are at right now in our Texas meta, and I think that we mm -hmm. just had a little bit of a good point to end it. Um, so. Cool. We're going to do our little sign-offs. Um, first ones, I got to go through my list of everything, right? Uh, Lone Star Hammered uh, just loves listing off everybody, man. Um, Shout them out, baby. Dude, I know. Hey, so that first one, Warzone Houston. Uh, there's going to be the link attached. Uh, please War use Dome. the promo code. Or, yeah, Wardome. Jesus Christ, Warzone. <laughs> Sorry, Wardome. There's so many like different war or something uh, things. But, hey, War. Yeah. War Dome Houston. Um, yeah. Use the link attached. Use the promo code HAMMER so we can choose the school. I'm going to leave that up to all the viewers that will be able to vote on whatever school gets to actually get all the, the 40K stuff that they're going to donate to them, including the terrain from the other events and things like that. Uh, it's also this first year that they're doing this. It's going to be at a super fucking cool venue. I keep looking at the pictures of the venue. It looks beautiful. It looks phenomenal. Uh, the guys running it are making some really good judge calls. Um, and I just got to play on the terrain. That was printed by my next person that I'm going to bring up. Um, and it was phenomenal terrain to play on. Uh, so it was really fun and a really good uh, event. I I'm, I'm just cannot wait to go to it coming up here. So buy your tickets to Wardome, Houston. Uh, and then talking about terrain getting printed, got a big shout out again to Rexer's Lasers. Uh, Joey Rexer is, is a fantastic gentleman. He prints almost all of the terrain for the events here in Texas. Um, if you want to practice for whatever those events are coming up, you got to buy his terrain and it's, it's the best way to get in those reps. He's able to make the GW terrain and he also makes all the gaming aids that we all want to use no matter what it is to just say, Hey, this unit has this. So it's never any confusion between your and you, you and your opponents. And then our last event, um, before I let, uh, James take over here is going to be the Alamo. Um, so go to the Alamo. Elmo's fantastic. It's going to be here in San Antonio, right downtown at the Hyatt. David's putting on a fantastic event for that. He only has 90 <laughs> tickets available this year. Um, so get your tickets as soon as possible because those will sell out. And Alamo is always a fantastic event. I've met so many people that say 
that is their favorite event in Texas. And it's like one of the first ones they were able to go to, and it, it just stays in their mind. So go to Alamo, guys. All right, James, what sign-offs you got, brother? Let's see. Out of the three events that I've taken my shirt off drunk, Alamo is one of them. Yep. So Alamo is already <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, always, it's always such a fun time, man. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, Iron Cage GT, we run three events a year in Dallas, um, come up, we only have 56 available at any given time, uh, a total chill event, uh, really cheap alcohol on tap, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, James is underselling it, I, I'm not gonna lie, I love going to any of the Iron Cages, you're still having it at the, uh, is it a VFW? Uh, it's an American Legion. American Legion, sorry. It's in a, it, American Legion. It is a phenomenal venue. The people there are super nice, and like he said, the drinks are, are cheap, and it's awesome. It's really dangerous. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are always Perfect. fucking amazing events to go to. You got anything else, James? Uh, if you come to my Iron Cage, please don't buy me any alcohol. Everyone does it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Buy James mean, alcohol. You heard yeah. it here first. I, I don't want to go to the ER again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it happens. All right. Uh, Nick, you got any sign offs, brother? Um, yeah, I guess come check out the Black Crusade. Uh, oh, yeah. we, we're, we're just finishing up our fifth GT. Um, and the next GT, I'm going to be updating all the terrain. It's going to be texas terrain so we're going to do like a texas themed black crusade uh running so we're going to have clutch city gt terrain we're going to have alamo terrain we're going to have dallas open terrain it's all going to be in there at tts so at the very least you can practice for texas events come check us out Um, do you guys do you guys have a discord or anything yeah it's i run it out of the black crusade discord and i'll give you the link lou uh, okay cool for it uh, yeah it's going to be up here as we're talking about it honestly Cool. I runs out of a Facebook group. Um, just join it and I'll accept your request or whatever. Hell Sweet. Yeah. Sweet, man. Well, cool. Hey, thank you again, guys. I'm glad that we got to talk about all these events. Congratulations to everybody that won this last week. Um, once again, we had like fucking almost 80 people playing all across Texas. So good job to everyone. Uh, do all the YouTube shit like Nick says. Like, subscribe, comment, and... Yeah, if we hit 150 subscribers, uh, I'll do another giveaway, and that one's going to be a pretty decent one. So thanks again for he'll watching, also, guys. He'll also oh. take his shirt off. So there's that. I won't take my shirt off on stream. There's no way. No, no, you said it. You said it later. Uh, no, no, it's already here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gaslighting champ, and this isn't going to work for me. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, guys, for watching.